All right, back again, sort of as a recap, because it's so important. What do we, what do we know just from the meter? We know stuff that has eluded Jews and Christians about the meaning of Daniel 9 for 2,000 years. And one of the guys in the forum, the Frank Forum, asked me, you know, how come we don't know? And my answer to him is, I don't know why we don't know. You count syllables and it's really patent. Look at the numbers in front of you. 49 syllables in Daniel 9.4. 49 syllables in Daniel 9.13. Textually, this is a paragraph of indictment. And it fits the meter, too, to close it like this. So obviously, if you had counted the syllables, like I did here, just how many syllables in each verse, you see the pattern. OK? Now, I wouldn't have been able to discern what this pattern meant if I didn't already see it first in Isaiah 53. That's what started this whole business. In the Isaiah 53 videos in YouTube, and then I ported some of them over to, to Vimeo. I, I, I tracked, I showed how I learned the meter. I didn't know the meter existed either. But I was looking for, I was looking at the Isaiah Moeller scroll where words were supposed to be missing. It was real obvious to me that Isaiah was doing a sort of poem because of the dramatic words that he was using and the ellipsis. So I thought, well, I'll just map the syllable counts in Hebrew, and then I can tell the cadence, and then maybe I'll know what's, what words are missing, except that there weren't any. Moeller's scroll for Isaiah 53 has all the actual original words Isaiah wrote. There are no gaps. One of the mastery guys writing a copy thought there were gaps. Not mastery, but, you know, the great Isaiah scroll was in with the Dead Sea Scrolls. So they thought, well, you know, syllables are missing. No, there aren't any. And then I did the Isaiah videos to show you there aren't any. After that, I learned about Psalm 90. And after that, I learned about Daniel. So by the time I get to Daniel here, I know what I'm looking for. And look how bald it is. Now, it's not only bald with respect to the meter that you already could see if you had seen it already in Isaiah and you had seen it already in Psalm 9. It's not only bald there. It's bald with respect to God's answer to Daniel. Therefore, we know how to read God's answer to Daniel. So how come for 2,000 years we don't know how to read it? When these, this, these are syllable counts. Hi, verse 9, 4 is 49 syllables. Verse 9, 13 is also 49 syllables. Well, then that must be deliberate. We also know that Israel was out of the land for 49 years. And she came back to the land. Roughly, you know, at the beginning of 537 BC, Cyrus issues a decree, Israel goes back, she takes money and some people with her, and they start to rebuild. And then they get into all that nonsense. That's what the book of Haggai is about and all the rest of it. They get into all that nonsense and nervousness over whether or not to rebuild because they start having, you know, opposition. We know that. Scholars have known that for a long time. Okay, well, hello. She goes back in the 49th year, at, you know, at the end of it. When the land has all of its Sabbaths, we know that was 49 years. We know that. Eusebius was wrong, and we should know that, but nobody's, you know, bothering to correct Eusebius. Okay, but we do know. Okay, so here's 49. That should be meaningful. Okay, now, how many sabbatical years did the land miss? 49. 49 times 7 is what? 430. But 
434. Oh, 434, that's 62 weeks in God's reply. And God's reply also added 49. Yeah, because it was Miss Sabbatical years due in addition to the 434 actual years that transpired. That's where your 483 is coming from in God's reply in Daniel 9, which is what? 69 weeks. In other words, when Daniel's doing his prayer to God, he's using known accounting time. And then when God replies to Daniel, he's using Daniel's numbers, which you see right in front of your face in the meter 49 49 49 plus 434 is 483 equals 69 weeks and where did Daniel get those numbers from because God's replying to Daniel's numbers visible to you right here on screen by means of syllable counts it cannot be more obvious that the syllable counts are used to count time right in front of your face you have all the proof you need now does that prove that all of the interpretation that I got on front of your face on screen is right no, but does it prove right in front of your face now that these syllable counts are used to count time? Yeah. So how come we didn't know that? How come for 2,000 years the Jews don't know? How come for 2,000 years the Christians don't know? And there's only one answer to that question. They didn't ask. Because there's nothing good about me. I keep trying to tell people that. There's nothing good about me. I'm not smart. I am curious. That's all that's good about me. If you want to call anything good about me, I guess you can call that good. Because I ask God. Why? Because I don't understand. And frankly, when God, God's the one who started this ball rolling with me, and I'm not good either there, because my first response to him when he says, Daniel's metered, is I didn't want to do this. Everything in front of you is at his behest that doesn't mean it's right because you know I don't necessarily hear him right but I told you I was standing at my my kitchen counter looking at spices and he hits me with Daniel's meter and I don't like that because this is time this is very painstaking stuff to do this is very it, it took days and days and days probably really months. I don't really remember how long. I remember hating it the whole time. The whole time I did this, I hated it. So th there's nothing good about me. I asked the question about meter on Isaiah and Psalm 90. So now that I had that information, I know how to look at Daniel. Because the methodology is the same. You yeah, count the syllables in the verse. Okay, and this is the pattern that resulted, and it drove me crazy for months. Okay, Dad, what is this pattern? What is it telling me? Yeah, well, here, see, 49 years they were out of the land. That's known to history before we knew the meter. 434, that's 62 weeks in God's reply. That was known before we knew the meter. 434 plus 49 is 483. That's what? 69 weeks. Before we knew the meter, we knew God's reply, it's in the text. We just didn't know why it was there. Well, here you have in front of you why it's there. So now you can go to God yourself. I mean, if he's going to hit me with it, why wouldn't he do you? There's nothing good about me. And show you, hi, yeah, that's true. See, 69. Leaving out the 70th week. Okay? And where did Daniel get these numbers? As I started to say, he got them from Isaiah. Now you have to go to the Isaiah channel and see the Isaiah videos. Okay? He got them from Isaiah. Isaiah did a perfectly balanced time poem of first David to last David, 
which I explained in the Isaiah channel. That's what started me in this whole meter thing. Perfectly balanced. I haven't, I haven't gone through, Isaiah's doing prospectively what Daniel's doing retrospectively here. Isaiah back in 712 was going through all the kings to the destruction of the temple and then to the reconstruction of the temple and then all the way down to Messiah. He does a complete future timeline. Okay, year by year. Each syllable standing for one year like Isaiah, like Daniel's doing here. Daniel's doing it retrospectively to show that, yes, what Isaiah said got done so far up until Daniel talks because he's talking as a result of the temple going down and he's praying at the Yifki clause. Where is it? Right here. This is Daniel's prayers at this point in Isaiah 53, 6. Okay. He's gone full circle here. That's why this is 49 and this is 434. Because he's he's still in the 69 weeks. That's why it's ensconced like this. It's an accounting balance sheet is what he's doing. And it's all based on Israel being apostate, being late to the party, not observing her, you know, high holidays. And not observing the sabbatical years either. See, because there's 56 days between the beginning of Passover and Pentecost and the beginning of Pentecost and 9th Ave when the temple's going to go down, which God promised due to Manasseh, who had his own change of heart when he was 49. See, this is really bald, and you can get all that information from the text if not in Daniel, elsewhere, and Daniel's reading that text, and so he's matching his syllable counts to that text. From Isaiah, who plotted out the whole thing. Okay? So God's reply that comes to us from out of the blue when we're reading it in translation is obviously sourced. First in Isaiah, who predicted the whole timeline. Then Daniel, who's using Isaiah's timeline and saying, yes, it all came to pass. And here's the accounting for what we've missed and what we've done wrong as basis for what? The indictment, which ends right here. And then he goes forward in time in his petition, 42 being the number of growth, to complete the 69 weeks metaphorically, which you can't complete unless you rebuild the temple so that Messiah can come and die. And therefore, after he dies, all the time is made up except for the tribulation week. So that the man of time, okay, can complete going from Greece to Rome. See, this is all the way through Greece. And then Rome, because Rome is going to be um, you know, the, the final taker downer. Okay? So when God replies to Daniel using Daniel 9, 26 and 27, he had already given Daniel that information. So he's confirming it. Confirming. Not giving new information Daniel didn't know. Confirming it. That's why Daniel doesn't ask any questions or faint at the end of Daniel 9 even though he faints at the end or asks questions in the other chapters. How can this be? I don't understand. He didn't ask questions here, and he doesn't faint. Why? Because he understood it. That was the basis of his prayer. He's praying to God for it. And God, in reply, Daniel 9, 24 through 27, responds, yeah. And 9, 27, set apart from set apart from, syntactically set apart from, Daniel 9.26, just as Daniel is setting it apart here. It's really bald, isn't it? The outline for God's reply is in Daniel's own prayer. But we haven't known that for 2,000 years, and we've written every kind of stupid treatise on the planet about what Daniel 9.24 through 27 means, not knowing that, hi, here's how you know what it means. Look at Daniel's prayer, which we should have done. And the answer to everything is 42.
Now, in the process, I made a math error, which I covered. This goes to 277 BC, and that takes you to the first Syrian war. And then this goes to 230 BC, and that takes you to the first Illyrian war. And it's through the first Illyrian war that Rome begins to be a present in the Eastern Met. Until then, she wasn't. And it's through the first Syrian war that the Seleucids, the Seleucids become, you know, the dominant power. And that's going to be covered in Daniel 10, 11, and 12. So all this is a setup that Daniel already knew. He just didn't know some details. See the point? It's really pretty important. It's really pretty elucidating. And we got history to look at. So we know where this comes from. So that's the recap. All right? A couple other things I didn't cover that I need to cover. Because this is a seven-year error, I've got to deal with the fact that Mary is not, or if she is, it's she's playing a game with the seven. I had said in the Mary videos that Mary was using 73 to play on Daniel's 73 sevenths here. Okay? And she might really be doing that, which means that she's going backwards in time. She's not using the numbers that I got. I, I mean, she is using the numbers that I got here. But she's doing it with, as an adjustment, OK? Because the difference here is not 69, it's 62, OK? If she's debiting seven years here, then the question is why? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure she is, OK? I'm not sure that she's actually using 73 now. That's the point I need to make. If I made this mistake, is Mary really debiting seven years and going back to 284? I can't prove that she really is. Because what she mentions is the first, is the, the marriages that are in Daniel 11. And that really takes you to the first Syrian war. And she might be going back this far, but I can't prove it now. Okay. So all of my statements about her using 73 years from Daniel's endpoint here to get to Hanukkah, I'm not sure she's doing that, and she doesn't need to do that. Because her own timeline is based on, you know, 35 years since her birth or and or since Herod became Tetrarch. So she doesn't need to do the 73 game, okay? Daniel definitely is doing that because that ties in back to Psalm 90. Okay? But then if that is what he's doing and she's not doing it, then we got to look at this other dateline because typically in the, the whatchamacallit, the style of this stuff, your first dateline is the first time the text is divisible, the syllables are divisible by seven cumulatively. We know what that 49 is, 49 cents the temple went down. But I never covered 182. Technically speaking, by the style that all the other Bible writers use, I shouldn't be counting this. I should be counting this. Okay, so now to try to correct what might have been an error there, it might just be extra. Because definitely 73 sevens ties to Moses. Because that's where Moses leaves off in Psalm 90. Okay, but then I left out myself talking about what the 182 means, and I should. All right, so now let's let's look at that. 182 is, technically speaking, by all the, the style of meter in the Bible that I've done videos on so far, they're all consistent about this. They use two date lines. The first one is the first time that, that all the cumulative syllables are divisible by seven. That's a no-brainer. The second one follows the same rule. The second time the syllables are divisible by seven. Okay? What is it in Daniel? Well, we already know when he's writing. He's writing in November of 538. So you could call that 537 because it's, it's, the year is almost over. So we'll just say 537. Okay? That's 182, so what you have to do is add it to go backwards in time. 
to 182. It could be 182 sevens, but we'll just say 182 years. That's 719, okay? Or if you say 538 and then you add 182, you get 720. What's that? Well, that's the time of Isaiah, okay? Now, I still have to do the videos on Isaiah to show how year by year, just like Daniel's doing here, Isaiah's doing a future exposition. Okay? He's going future, starting in Isaiah 53 2, he goes future from Manasseh's birth forward. Okay? In my badly pronounced Hebrew. That's where he's covering Manasseh's birth. Okay? And then he goes forward all the way to the last Messiah, you know, the last David, which is the Messiah. Okay. Isaiah uses an annual chronology to do that. The problem I have is that based on his metering, he might be his starting year helping Hezekiah could be as early as 718. Okay. Well, depending on when is 718 and what kind of rounding you want to use if Daniel's if we say Daniel's doing 538 and we add 182 we get 720 if we say 537 and we add 182 bearing in mind you can't split a syllable for half a year you get 719 so that's one of the first things that you can talk about is that is that Daniel is using as his second date line to tie back to when Isaiah started counseling Hezekiah. See, because here's the thing, with Hezekiah, all of your scholars will tell you that Hezekiah started ruling in 715, but he was a co-regent with his dad prior. See, let me show you. Where is that? Here's a timeline. This is genius.xls. You've probably seen it before. Okay, see, here we go. Here is Hezekiah. This is all, this particular list of the years is taken from a Zondervan Bible. I want to say it's the uh, NASB. They had a sort of like an inset with a list of the kings, but this is like conventional scholarship. Okay, his dad was Ahaz. Ahaz got sick toward the end. Okay, so Hezekiah started ruling co-regent with his dad earlier. And during this period of time, you have the, the problem with Sennacherib taking over Ephraim, a.k.a. northern Israel, a.k.a. Samaria. Okay, and they were trying, there were actually two, and this is where I got to do some more research to prove it. There were actually two attempts made by Sennacherib. Okay, um, well, it was Sargon and Sennacherib. Two attempts that were made to take over um, Judah. And the first time, and the second time. The second time, you know, that was famously recorded with, you know, having to go back with the, the sickness in the army and all that. But Hezekiah was already on the throne then, which is kind of a hard thing for scholars because what they say is, well, yeah, but that was 721. Okay, that was six years prior. So then Hezekiah, the only way you can tally this up and make it make sense is that Hezekiah was co-regent with his dad during that time. Okay, it might not extend as far as 721. It might be like 718. So what I have to go back and do is the chronology because there's an overlap and a confusion by scholars as to when the kings of Israel, as distinct from the kings of Judah, when the kings of Israel were ruling and what their co-regnal years were. And there's an overlap in particular with regard to Hezekiah. Okay, that's been sort of a matter of debate among scholars. And I got to go through that and find out where the Bible puts it. But right now you're getting a sort of heads up that, oh, well, then Hezekiah was actually 
Coregno with his dad, maybe his dad was sick, or maybe it was just plain Coregno, going maybe all the way back to 537, we'll say at earliest, okay, at latest, plus 182 equals 719 BC, or the year prior. And that would be Daniel's second dateline, which makes a great deal of sense considering that he's folding in the timeline with Isaiah. Okay, and then as soon as pretty much when Manasseh is 12 years old, Hezekiah makes Manasseh, Manasseh co-regnal. Okay, so the habit of doing it early in the child's life might have been true for Hezekiah and he's following through on what was done for him with his own child. He didn't have any children at the time that um, Isaiah started, you know, ministering to him. And basically what happened was he went apostate, so God had Isaiah tell Hezekiah, get your house in order, you're going to die. And he would have been childless at that point. And so then he prays and, you know, as it were, repents. And um, therefore God tells Hezekiah, oh, you know, through Isaiah, okay, you get 15 more years. Okay, Manasseh is born during that 15-year time, really almost right afterwards. Okay? So that's the parallel. So that would be your second date line is to date back to the time when Isaiah was ministering to Hezekiah. That would be your second date line. That would be really important because he's tying to Isaiah. The time would tie, the, the prophecy ties. He's doing in retrospect what Isaiah did as a prophecy, and he's using the same number counts and the same benchmarks that Isaiah was using. None of this stuff is new. That's the point I want to get across to you. All these numbers are accounting numbers that are in Isaiah. Daniel is basically recounting and updating the timeline from Isaiah and saying, yes, what Isaiah said came true, just as was written in the Law of Moses. That's 9.13. Just as was written in the Law of Moses. That means, you know, the whole Bible. All these things will come to pass. Yeah, because Isaiah was real specific about the year count. Specifically, when Daniel's praying, He's at that year count in Isaiah 53, 6, syllable 252, which is really important for a lot of other reasons I'm not going to go into right now, that it's that syllable count. Okay? So all of these numbers in the meter are definitely very clearly and very provably used as a timeline that in this case is retrospective exposition. In Isaiah's case was prospective exposition. But Daniel's using Isaiah to say that the prophecy is fulfilled using the same methodology as Isaiah. So it's not really hard to figure out what Daniel's doing. So it's not hard to figure out what God means in his reply to Daniel. The problem is it has not been done. And you can say, well, who are you? You're just a brain out. Good point. And my answer to you is, the authority is not me. This is a forensic test. You run on the text yourself. And I'm really sorry that nobody with degrees after his name has done this before. But you know what? Here's your evidence. It's forensic. So, guess what? Colleges? Universities, seminaries, get your act together and start moving. Peace out.